Hi there. My name is Lori Rehfeldt, and most of you, or many of you know me. Um, I was asking one of the, my Twitter friends, I'm new to Twitter, so there you go, um, Tammy Lynn Michaels. Now, she is in, just to let you know, she's famous, okay? Famous. She's in uh, Dolly Parton's Heartstrings, the episode called Cracker Jack. And who loves Cracker Jacks? I love Cracker Jacks. And then when you find out Cracker Jacks is a dog, oh, I'm giving it away. But, excuse me. Anyway, she's in Heartstrings by Dolly Parton's Heartstrings. And like I said, the episode's Cracker Jack. And I saw it. It was really, really, really sweet. Really nice. And I had asked her, because she's famous, okay, sorry, we're all famous in our obscure ways, but I had asked her to ask me some questions because, oh, she doesn't want people to know that, or her agent doesn't want to know that she is who she is, or that I'm talking about her, I think, maybe I'm wrong. However, where was I? Okay. She, we're going to call her Nutmeg, okay? So, I had asked her, Nutmeg, uh, five, to, to give me five questions, okay? So I can talk about Cable Green. And she did. And she said, well, I don't know anything about it, so how am I going to ask you questions? And I said, you're famous, you'll figure it out, you'll roll with it, you know, UFO, we can do it. We can do it. We have it in us, okay? And she laughed, ha, ha, ha. And I laughed, ha, ha, ha. And of course, now I can't find the questions. Wait, I'll find them. I will find Okay. So her first question is this. Why do you think our government have denied the existence of extraterrestrial subjects for so long? I don't know. What was, <laughs> I don't, really don't know. I mean, technically, I was in the government. And technically, I knew about it, and I reported what I had seen. But I'm telling you, there was some crazy stuff going on over there. That's why you got to see the film documentary coming out, hopefully in July of this year, 2020. Uh, Capel Green. Got to see Capel Green. Capel Green. Capel Green. Now, don't listen to some of those researchers who think they know everything, but technically, they were just a clerk at the time when this, oh no, they weren't even a clerk at the time, but they were actually a teenager. So, yeah, Nick Pope, all right. So, so anyway, uh, that it's a good question, but there's probably more levels or um, layers to it. I think that the extraterrestrials are kind of like overseeing us. So I, I really think the hierarchy of our government is pretty darn low. I mean, we're down there with the, uh, I don't want to disenfranchise anyone, but we are pretty low. And so, for instance, I do think that there's oversight going on, okay? And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I do. And so I really, really think that they don't have a handle on it, and why some people have been exposed to it, and some have it, um, anyway, beyond me. So, I don't think our government is as bright as we want them to be, or what they think. However, like I mentioned about the layers, one of the big layers was is that even though technically we weren't supposed to have them there during the time, we had nuclear bombs on, on the... Uh, on British soil, and when I was 18, I didn't even know that was against the law or that we weren't supposed to do that. But we were in the Cold War, and it was really cold. It was that's why I'm wearing this sweater because it was so cold I couldn't stand it. All right, so did I answer that question? I think I did. Okay, second question. I did five questions here. What are your thoughts on the theory that UFOs do not have, do not all have the same place of origin? That was kind of interesting because I asked, what do you mean by origin? I mean, 
And then she said, well, it could come from different places and whatnot. And then I thought, you know, that's a good question. Nutmeg, you're right on the button there. Okay. Well, let me see. The Native Americans, and there are many cultures throughout the world that think it, we were, this planet was seeded. Uh, you know, they planted little seeds here in the world, and we evolved from another place. My, my speculation is, and you'll learn about it in Cable Green again, yes you will, that we may possibly come from uh, one star system or cluster of stars that seem to crop up all the time is Pallades. So there's a connection there with Pallades. And there might be connections with other places because I, I, you know, the other day I was looking at some mold growing, uh, not near my house, but, and I saw it and I thought to myself, you know, that they could be aliens. I mean, we got a lot of crazy, interesting, bizarre bugs and insects. I've seen them on Facebook and Twitter and all these places and I like them. Like, oh, they're so cute. Oh, they're, ooh, that's yuck. But they probably said the same thing about us. So, I don't think it's one place. I don't. But right now, I'm leaning toward the area called Pleiades. Now, here's something else to ponder. Is that, okay, we don't come from the same place. But there's a possibility that we're also linked with future or linked to people that knew us or they were us. Now here's the interesting thing is they always fly the same type of aircraft even though there's no mechanical sound and there's some like oh wow they can disappear they can do this they can do that technically they really haven't changed their technology so I'm gonna tell them if they hear me say this come on do something more interesting something that we can really you know catch our attention. So, so that's my thought, is that some of it's coming from the future. I've heard that things are really, really bad, like 8,000 years from now. And who knows? When I saw my UFO, uh, I lost about two hours of time, me and the guy, um, Keith Duckfield, who was with me, on patrol. And we lost about two hours. And I got really scared because I started thinking, oh, what if I was abducted, you know? Oh, no. Then that would mean they may have taken some of my DNA. The problem with my DNA, and there's not really much problem with it. Maybe they have a good sense of humor. But I was never good at math. And I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe they don't have to be good at math way out there. So anyway, but I did have a son who's awesome at math, and I also have a daughter who's really, really wonderful at math. So I think I answered that question. Bam. Okay. Cable Green, you gotta see it, July 2020. Sounds like 2020 like that. What's that thing called? A show, 2020. All right. So, okay, we've got one question, two questions, ah, three. Have you had more than one UFO experience? Well, this one was an official one, the one that I saw, because I had to report it. I had to report it. If I didn't report it and something bad happened, I would have gotten in trouble. And I did not want to get in any trouble. So, I had to report it. And I didn't like it. And I really thought that, you know, if I have to report it, and I'm going to take heat for it. And I did, because I had to report it. I had to report it. You don't understand. The stress that put me under just to report this darn thing. I realized that, you know, Jesus Christ could have come up to me and told me the meaning of life, and I would have had to send him to the public affairs office. So, anyway, have I had more than one UFO experience? That, that's about, yeah, I guess uh, just one. That, that's, that was enough for me. Um, now there's a lot of synchronicity and there's a lot of things going on um, because of that incident and 
I, I think that there's the whole paranormal that really wraps around the whole entire place of, of RAF Bentwaters and RAF Woodbridge over in England, which you'll hear more about on Cable Green. And, you know, it's about us. It's not about just one person. So don't listen to that guy who was saying, oh, it's a con job, because he is the con job. So, have you had any long-term side effects, physical or otherwise, due to your exposure experience with this topic? Yes. Yes, I have. One, because I was marginalized when I was there. And I'm still marginalized because I can't even get anyone to pay attention to me so they can see me in a conference because I really want to get my story out. It's kind of like a form of therapy. I think I deserve it. At least I saw something, you know? And I keep thinking of my nephew saying, he saw this, he saw one of the trailers to Cable Green coming out in 2020 in July. And he asked me, he said, well, did you see this? And I was like, no. He goes, well, what about this? And I kept looking at him and said, no, no, I didn't see that either. He goes, what exactly did you see? And I, I, I told him. Check out Mystery at East Gate on YouTube if you want a, an idea of what I saw. But what I saw also has an important influence of the rest of my life. Because I, it's, it's, I don't want to say haunted, but it's haunted me, okay? It has haunted me. I've been haunted. All right. But it's interesting because there are a lot of connections to what happened there and that what happened in many other places in the world that you can almost create this triangle, kind of like a Bermuda Triangle without it being a Bermuda Triangle. But it could be possibly um, a Bermuda Triangle. And so, long time effects. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm on a quest. I'm on a journey. So, um, and like I said, this is my, my thing. I am not a UFO kind of person, um, you know, just not. But what happened to me and the effects of it and, and relationships and the synchronicity and all those little pieces that come together make it really, really, really kind of interesting. It makes me realize that our world is not what we think it is. I hope I answered that question. Now, the last one, when you reported your experience to your military bosses, what was their response? Ray Phelps seeing UFOs. Ray Phelps seeing UFOs. We're gonna have to write her up. You don't see UFOs while you're on duty because you can't you don't have evidence. If you don't have hard evidence, you don't. And so, when I had to report it, and, and I wasn't happy about it, it was really, it was just frustrating for me, and like I mentioned, being marginalized. Now, one thing I will say is I was very, very happy when I learned that the UFO sighting came back in December, because mine happened in February 1980. In the same location, pretty much, except mine flew over the runway, okay? Mine flew over the base. It's not supposed to fly over the base. If it had stayed off the base, I would not have pursued it. Mm -mm. Because I know it's just too heavy. It's just too heavy. The, the, the whole the whole responsibility of carrying it and defending yourself without having a, any evidence but you know what you saw you corroborate it with somebody else they know what they saw and it turned out that um, Keith Duffield and also Doc Rhodes also saw it which was kind of neat because he was on he was kind of uh, about a mile or so away at the main gate of RAF Woodbridge so, yeah, it wasn't nice. Uh, a, women were not liked in the military. B, women were not liked in the military. And C, 
I don't know. If they knew how to handle me. I don't know. I don't know. But I knew that if I had pursued it or wanted to figure out what it was and I wanted to um, make noise, I would have been railroaded out of the military. And I would never have become a major. Back then, I would have been just a major pain in the ass. I'm not a major. So here I am, 60 years old, but looking good, I'm not. And just thinking that there's a lot to this world we don't know. And I hope I touched on some of the elements without giving anything away because Cabal Green, the documentary, is coming out in July of 2020, and the folks who have created it have really gone out of their way um, with their time and their efforts to make this uh, film possible, and they gave me the opportunity to be in it. So I thank them a lot. It was like Stephen Greer, when he gave me the opportunity to be in the Disclosure Project, it still felt the same way. So, well, that's my story, and I'm going to stick with it. Now, I hope I answered Tammy Lynn Michaels questions, kind of, at least a little bit. And if not, it's, as always, to be continued. It, it, it just is. And then when you find out the other things that happened, and Cable Green that I shared with them. If I gave them the kitchen sink, everything. Because there was just some crazy shit going on over there. And yeah, I survived it. I survived it, as did many of my colleagues. Well, anyway. So Nutmeg or Tammy Lynn Michaels, whichever you want to go by. I like Nutmeg though, it's so cute. Keep in mind, you gotta see Dolly Parton's heartstrings and you gotta see Crappy Jack. The woman met Tammy Lynn Michaels. Her timing is awesome. She's funny. She's funny. I actually want to do kind of like a correspondence where she talks to me and I talk to her that I'm just not talking to the camera. But some people have to go and check with their agent about it, even though I'm pretty much doing it for free, I think. Actually, I'm just trying to get the word out. I love you all. May the odds be ever in your flavor. But more importantly, the strange world we're living in. Fight on.